in the last lecture we have seen derivation of beam strength that is the maximum tangential load that the gear tooth can carry without bending failure therefore the beam strength indicates the maximum capacity of the gear tooth to carry the tangential load therefore because of that tangential load bending moment will be there at the base of the tooth and because of this bending moment bending stresses will be induced in the gear tooth therefore we have to determine that bending stresses or permissible bending stresses therefore the gear tooth or the tooth of the gear is subjected to fluctuating bending stress as it comes in contact with the meshing tooth the stress time diagrams for gear tip are illustrated in figure now i will explain the figure then afterwards you have to draw the figure and you have to write down this now this is the driving gear it is rotating in clockwise direction in between driving and driven gear idler gear is there or idle gear is there idle gear is used to bridge the gap between driver gear and driven gear it is the first function and second function is to achieve the desired direction of motion of the driven gear for that idle gear is used now this is the stress time diagram for driving and driven gears therefore in one complete revolution you are finding that the stress on the driving gear and driven gear remains same value of the stress that is sigma max remains the same but in case of idle gear you just see stress is maximum at this point that is above the zero line and below the zero line also stress is existing therefore that is minimum stress sigma maximum and sigma minimum therefore because of this maximum and minimum stress since in the diagram it has been written here sigma max below the zero line but we are knowing that below the zero line value is negative that's why i am considering that this stress is at sigma minimum and this stress is at sigma maximum because it is above the zero line therefore the variation of stress from maximum value to minimum value in one revolution it is known as fluctuation of stresses fluctuation means difference between maximum and minimum therefore the following observations are made from the figure first the teeth of the driving and driven gears are subjected to stress in one direction only that is in only positive direction since these two graphs are above the zero line therefore stress is called as positive stress it is called repeated stress for this type of stress distribution sigma m that is mean stress is equal to sigma max upon 2 and sigma a that is axial stress is equal to sigma max divided by 2 where sigma max is equal to maximum bending stress sigma m is equal to mean stress
सिग्मा ए इज इक्वल टू स्ट्रेस एम्पलीट्यूड देयर फॉर ड्रॉ दिस फिगर एंड राइट डाउन दिस आई विल वेट फॉर फाइव टू टेन मिनट्स प्लीज राइट डाउन
Hello. Hello. I think you are completed. The teeth of the idler gear or planetary pinion are subjected to stress in both directions as shown in figure C. It is called reversed stress. For this type of stress distribution, sigma m that is mean stress is equal to zero and axial stress sigma a is equal to sigma max. Since the teeth are subjected to fluctuating stresses, endurance limit stress SE is the criterion of design. Therefore, the maximum bending stress is equal to the endurance limit stress of the gear tooth. The endurance limit stress of the gear tooth depends upon the following factors. First, surface finish of the gear tooth. Second, size of the gear tooth. Third, reliability used in design. Fourth, stress concentration in the gear tooth. Fifth, gears rotating in one direction or both directions. And sixth, gears tooth subjected to stress in one direction or both directions. Therefore, for the idler gear or planetary gear, two types of stresses or stress, distribu stress distribution will be of in both directions. That is in positive direction also and negative direction also. Therefore, teeth of the idler gear is subjected to fluctuating stresses. Fluctuating means difference between maximum and minimum. Therefore, idler gear teeth are subjected to the bending stress, which is equal to the endurance limit stress of the gear tooth. Therefore, you write down this. I will wait for five minutes. Please write.
ओके नेक्स्ट इन प्रैक्टिस इट इज डिफिकल्ट टू गेट द अब मेन्शन डाटा फॉर ईच एंड एवरी केस ऑफ गियर डिजाइन Earl Buckingham has suggested that the endurance limit stress of gear tooth is approximately one third of the ultimate tensile strength of the material. Therefore, in this chapter, we will use this approximate value. Therefore, bending stress sigma b is equal to endurance strength S e is equal to one third of S u t. S u t means Ultimate tensile strength. In case of bronze gears, the endurance limit stress is taken at 40% of the ultimate tensile strength. Therefore, you write down this from Earl Buckingham. You write down to up to this strength. I will wait for five minutes. Write down, please. हेलो इफेक्टिव लोड ऑन गियर टू टू डिटरमाइन द टेंजेंशियल कंपोनेंट ऑफ द रिजल्टेंट फोर्स बिटवीन टू मेशिंग टीथ द फॉलोइंग टू इक्वेशन आर यूज फर्स्ट इज एम टी दैट इज टॉर्क ट्रांसमिटेड इज इक्वल टू सिक्सटीन टू टेन डेज टू सिक्स इंटू किलो वैट डिवाइडेड बाय टू पाई एन Here kilowatt means you have substitute power in kilowatt, and tangential load or tangential force Pt is equal to 2 mt divided by d, where small d is equal to pitch circle diameter of pinion or gear. We are knowing formula of pitch circle diameter is equal to modulus into number of teeth. The value of the tangential component therefore depends upon the rated power and rated speed in practice or in practical applications the torque developed by the source of power varies during the work cycle 
similarly the torque required by the driven machine also varies the two sides are balanced by means of flywheel i will explain this and again you write in gear design the maximum force due to maximum torque is the criterion this is accounted by means of a service factor the service factor cs is defined as cs is equal to maximum torque divided by rated torque therefore cs is equal to mt max divided by mt which is equal to pt max divided by pt where pt is the tangential force due to rated torque mt therefore rearranging the terms we are getting pt max is equal to cs into pt for electric motors cs is equal to starting torque upon rated torque the values of service factor are given in table 4 the examples of driving and driven machines with different working characteristics are given in tables 5 and 6 therefore table 4 indicates service factor for speed reduction gear boxes now first column is working characteristics of driving machine uniform light shock medium shock and in second column again there are three columns working characteristics of driven machine uniform moderate shock heavy shock therefore for uniform working characteristics for driven machine service factors are 1 1.25 1.75 for light shock 1.25 1.5 2.0 for medium shock 1.5 1.75 2.25 similarly we will see tables 5 and 6 table 5 indicates examples of driving machines with different working characteristics first column characteristic of operation second is driving machines for uniform characteristic of operation driving machines are electric motor steam turbine gas turbine for light shock multi cylinder ic engine for medium shock single cylinder internal combustion engine now table 6 table 6 indicates examples of driven machines with different working characteristics therefore characteristic of operation again uniform driven machines are generator belt conveyor platform conveyor light elevator electric hoist feed gears of machine tools ventilators turbo blower mixer for constant density material for medium shock driven machines are main drive to machine tool heavy elevator turning gears of crane mine ventilator mixer for variable density material multi cylinder piston pump feed pump for heavy shock press shear rubber rubber duff mill rolling mill drive power shovel heavy centrifuge heavy feed pump rotary drilling apparatus brickwood press pug mill etc therefore these are the different characteristic of operation along with driven machines driving machines and service factors therefore we just write down this effective load on gear to i will wait for 5 minutes for each slide please write down
we will stop here please write your numbers enter only one time we will meet in the next lecture thank you very much